Hello everyone. In this part of the presentation, we are going to see about the secondary resistance and retention forms. We have already finished the initial stage of tooth preparation and two steps in the final stage of tooth preparation. Now we shall see in detail about the seventh step in the steps in tooth preparation which is the secondary resistance and retention form. We shall see about the secondary resistance and retention form. Before going into the presentation, we should understand why we have to provide a secondary resistance and retention form. You may remember that in the initial stage of tooth preparation itself, we have provided the primary resistance and retention form. But in the secondary stage of tooth preparation, we have removed more decay which was presenting or we may have removed old existing restorative material or we may have applied a pulp protective base. All of these things could have compromised the primary resistance and retention features which we have already provided. So in order to enhance the re resistance and retention after all these procedures we may have to add little extra features. Whatever we are doing in the secondary resistance and retention form are all supplementary. The basic retention and the resistant features come which, which were we have already provided in the initial stage of tooth preparation. These are all some additive features, maybe minimal when compared to that of the primary resistance and retention forms. In that, we can broadly divide it into two categories, the mechanical preparation features and also the uh, chemical features like the, the preparation of the enamel walls by etching, priming and adhesion application. So all these things we will see in detail. So if you are looking into the features of the secondary resistance and retention, all these three you have to remember. First, it can be a retention grooves or and cores, then the preparation extension the skirt preparation, the beveled enamel margin, the pins, slots, steps and amalgam pins, then the placement of etchant, primer or adhesive on prepared walls. Let's see one by one. Let's first see about the retention grooves and cores. The retention grooves can be of two types. They can be of vertically oriented grooves which we can place as an additional retentive features in the proximal box or it can be a horizontally oriented retention group which we usually provide in class 3 and class 5 preparations for dental amalgam maybe also for direct filling gold restorations. Retention coves are placed in the incisal retention for class 3 amalgam and also the coves are placed in the pulpal floor in dentine in case of uh, large class 1 or class 2 restorations. So here we can see the placement of the uh, vertical grooves which can be placed only up to the axial wall or it can be placed up to the full extent of the length of the tooth preparation. So these are vertically oriented grooves. So these grooves which are vertically oriented or in sometimes it can we can place a horizontally oriented grooves or coves. All these things are uh, will provide some form of extra secondary resistance and retentive features. Next come is the preparation extension. Uh, this extension are the uh, which are mo most commonly provided in case of molars and maybe for some mandibular premolars with two lingual cusp especially the second premolar they are the facial or the lingual extensions into the facial or the lingual surface from the buccal or the lingual developmental grooves. Here we can see that there is a that we can extend the tooth preparation uh, but this in case of palatally and also buccally in case of mandibular molars. What, what we are doing here is there is a developmental groove and which can be carious and or there may be a cavity or a groove which, which is extending which may be partially carious and also the buccal pit or the palatal pit of the molar may also be carried. So what we do is we can extend the tooth preparation into the buccal or the lingual surfaces to include the buccal or the lingual groove and the buccal and the or the lingual surface of the uh, tooth. 
So once this is done, along with the restoration, it looks like an extension into the one of the facial or the lingual surface. So this happens, there will be an extra retention. So groove extensions are the second the secondary resistance and retentive features. The skirts are the preparation, which are often given for the cast metal restorations. They are preparation which can extend around. Uh, they are part of the uh, tooth preparation. Uh, which will en which will enhance the resistance form by embracing the tooth. We shall see in this picture, we can see that in one of the side that there is a missing cusp. So, however we give, the restoration can dislodge to the opposite side. There are chances. So, what we do is, in the opposite side, that for example, if the buccal cusp are missing, in the lingual side, we can extend the tooth preparation across the transitional line angle and we can prepare it in a thin way. This preparation, this extension is not given for amalgam because amalgam is thin in weak sections. And so we have to be using a cast metal restoration. We can extend this thin uh, extensions across the transitional line angles as shown in the picture and this will provide an enhanced retention and also the embracing effect. This will enhance the restoration for a long lasting one and this is called as a skirt preparation. So that will enhance the secondary resistance and retention form. And the next comes the beveled enamel margin. What are this beveled enamel margin? In cast metal and for some composite restorations, we can bevel the enamel margin. For cast metal restorations, if you are beveling the enamel margin, it will enhance the retention. But in case of uh, composite, if you are placing the beveled enamel margin, there is more enamel which is available for etching and bonding. So whenever there is more enamel which is available for etching and bonding, it automatically enhances the retention. So for composite and all for cast metal restoration, we can bevel the enamel margin, which will act as a secondary resistance and retention feature, which will enhance the tooth preparation. For example, in this picture, we can see that the enamel margins are all beveled. So once you are doing that, there is an enhancement, enhancement in the total surface area. Once the surface area is more, there is more retention. Okay, the next is the placement of the pins, slots, steps, and also the amalgam pins. Pins can be placed for any restoration. Even we can place for a uh, composite restoration. But amalgam pins are specifically made only for dental amalgam restorations. And the slots and the steps are also can be placed in large cavity preparation, especially complex amalgam restorations, which will enhance the retentive features. I will put the link in the description for a, a pin retained amalgam restoration. I have made it. And if you are interested to learn more about the pin retained amalgam restoration, I have an exclusive, extensive prepare, uh, presentation on that. It will be really helpful for all the dental students. I, I, I say that you can uh, uh, follow the description and also you can follow that video. It will be really helpful, especially for the dental students who are appearing for the exams. So once this pins, steps or slots are placed, that the restoration will go and get entangled with this extra retentive feature that you are placing. Once this is done, the restoration will have very, very extensive retentive forms. But always remember that whenever we are doing any of these extra uh, steps by placing the more number of pins or placing more steps or slots, that will compromise the resistance form of the restoration, but also it will enhance the retentive form for the restoration. So we should not place excessively greater number of pins or slots or grooves. And the final feature that we have to provide in a tooth preparation, that is secondary resistance and retention form is the placement of the etch and primer or adhesive on the prepared walls. We can etch, prime and apply an adhesive for most of the restorative material. For example, there is a type of restoration called as the bonded amalgam restoration. In this bonded amalgam restoration, we place a, a self-curing 
uh, resin and before it sets amalgam is compacted within the resin so the resin gets bonded to the tool structure and the amalgam get entrapped within the self cure resin that we are placing so this type of advanced enhancements we can do again the etching bonding and priming that we do for a composite restoration are all examples for secondary resistance and retentive features especially secondary retentive features which enhances the retention of the restoration or the bonding of the restoration with the tool structure uh, maybe for the other restorations like the ceramic restorations or the indirect composite restorations and also maybe for the indirect cast metal restoration it will enhance the retention by doing etching priming and adhesion application it will enhance the retention of the looting cement for example a resin cement which you are using for bonding or looting this restorations to that of the tooth so this all adds up in the secondary resistance and retention forms so we it's a normal practice to apply a bonding agent with the composite with uh, uh, with the looting materials with most of the looting resin cements they are all secondary resistance and retention forms so that we have come to the end of the secondary resistance and retention forms uh, hope you people have understood about the secondary resistance and retention form in viva especially for the direct students it is a frequently asked question what are the secondary resistance and retention forms and i hope that you people can now answer and it is also important question for your final exams about the secondary resistance and retention forms and if not the question is an essay question can complete the same the steps into preparation so stay tuned i will upload the other parts also have a nice day